Hey friend, Chris Vandeviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to show you the brand new workflow for recording multiple MIDI controllers at the same exact time, but to separate software instruments in your Logic projects. It's never been easier than it is now. And what I'm referring to is since the 10.7 update, we now have the ability to set individual MIDI input ports and channel filtering on a per track basis. It's awesome and really a long time coming. Now, if you're working with a version of Logic Pro prior to 10.7, no worries. I have a video that will help you out with getting all of your MIDI controllers set up in your particular situation. And I'll link to that in this video. But I want to show you real quick just the old way of going about this and how much it's been improved thanks to 10.7. So first things first, you have a few steps you have to go through and the steps were pretty cumbersome prior to 10.7. First, you had to go to file, go down to project settings and go to recording. And in the MIDI section, halfway down within the recording settings, we used to have an option called auto demix by channel when multi-track recording. And again, you had to enable this on a per project basis. Once enabled, you then would go to each of the individual software instrument tracks in your session and you go to the track inspector right here, and you would set a particular MIDI channel for each of your software instrument tracks. So we have drums, we have a bass, we have piano. And so it would make the most sense probably to set this to MIDI channel one, and then the bass to MIDI channel two, and the keys to MIDI channel three. And again, you would set it on a per track basis to a specific channel, and then you would go to each of the individual controllers you have connected to your Mac, and have to set the same exact MIDI channel on each of those controllers. But now there's only one dropdown you have to concern yourself with, again, on a per track basis, but it's so much easier. And that is the MIDI import option here. So if we select the drums, the MIDI import, once you click on the dropdown menu, will list all of the controllers you have connected to your Mac. So now all you have to do is set the drums for one particular controller, the bass for another controller, et cetera. From the get-go here, we have many options, right? But let's just start with the default option, which is all. And what this means is, is that any controller can access any software instrument track in your sessions or projects. You know, I have multiple controllers here. And if we record enable the drums, the bass, and the keys, I can play all three at the same time from any controller. So let's do it right now. I have a launch pad here. And there's a little bit of latency in the screen recording here, so... I can't play anything meaningful, but there's the launch pad. Then I have my launch keys. And then I have a micro cord connected to a MIDI interface to my Mac. Right? So this is not very helpful if you want to record all three of these controllers simultaneously, but two separate tracks. So let's record disable the bass and the keys. And now we're at least honed in on just the drums. And again, I could play it from any controller. Now, if we go back to that MIDI import in the track inspector, we can either turn off any communication from any controller. So let's do that right now. And nothing is being communicated to the drums right now. Or we can start setting this on a per controller basis. The first option is internal and remote. And internal is the musical typing or on-screen keyboard that you can access by going to window and going down to show keyboard or musical typing. So right, I could start playing with my max keyboard with the drums here. I might have to go down an octave. Now, if I start to play any of my physical controllers, the information from those controllers will not be communicated to Drum Machine Designer. They'll be ignored. So let's give it a try right now. Perfect. So the musical typing, the on-screen keyboard or logic remote on an iOS device are the only controllers that will communicate when you have the MIDI import set to internal and remote. From here, we can now start selecting individual controllers that are connected to your Mac. So I have the launch pad here. Let's select the MIDI out. And again, you know, it's very clear only the launch pad will be played with the Drum Machine Designer instance, no other controller. Beautiful. So now we can start to go to the other software instrument tracks in our session and set individual MIDI imports for the other controllers. So I'm going to set mine to the launch key here, to the MIDI out. And for the keys here, we'll set this to 
my MIDI interface. And now if we record enable all these options, right? Let's start to play on the individual controllers and I'll open the mixer so you can really see what's going on. The launch pad, the launch keys, and the micro -corg. Awesome. So at this point, you really don't have to concern yourself with MIDI channels or anything else. You really just have to dig into the MIDI import and you just set the particular controller that you want to communicate exclusively with that particular software instrument track. However, you can set a particular MIDI in channel as well. If maybe you have a controller that can communicate MIDI data across multiple channels. So in this case, let's go to Drum Machine Designer and let's set the MIDI in channel to 16. And let's set this back to all. Cool. Now I could go to my launch pad here and I could set using the note settings to MIDI channel 16. And let's start out with MIDI channel one. And if I try to play, you can see in the control bar here that information will be communicated in terms of MIDI, but there will be no sound at the moment. Now, if I go to the note settings, MIDI channel 16, and then I can play. Awesome. Now we have the detail of the MIDI out channel. And what this affords us is the ability to send MIDI data from a controller to specific elements or sections or instruments on a single software instrument track lane. To illustrate, let's bring in the studio horns. And I'm just going to load this Apple loop because it loads up a patch of the studio horns here. And let me just double click and we're just going to concern ourselves with the first lane here, octave of the studio horn patch. And if we take a listen real quick, let's just take a listen to what this sounds like with a single horn instance. Yeah, a little fast, but nonetheless, we hear one instance of the studio horns. And if we go back to the track inspector, we can see that the MIDI out channel is set to all. Now, if we head to the Logic Pro instrument manual, we can see under studio strings and horns that there's a table that illustrates to us that each of the different elements or sections of the horns or strings are on specific MIDI channels, if you so choose to choose a specific MIDI channel. So in this case, we go back to Logic, and if we set the MIDI out channel from that of all to something like channel two, if we go back to the manual, we can see that's the alto sax one. So let's take a listen. Or we could go to MIDI channel seven, and that'll give us a trumpet. Pretty awesome. And then if we go to MIDI channel 11, right, we'll get a trombone. So you could specify specific MIDI channels for specific sections or instruments in a single instance of a software instrument. If we go to the instrument four track lane and open up this instance of contact, I have three instruments loaded in contact and each instrument is on its own MIDI channel. So the retro machines is loaded, the session strings and also the hybrid keys. And under the info pane, we can see that each is loaded to MIDI channel one. If we go right here, MIDI channel two, and we can select from the drop down. There we go. And number three here, MIDI channel three. So now we can play any one of these instruments on their dedicated MIDI channel. So let's do that right now. Let's set this to MIDI channel one for the MIDI out. or MIDI channel two, or three. It's pretty awesome. The last thing I wanna show you today is how you can make this all work for you if you'd like to record external MIDI instruments such as synths or drum machines, but you wanna control or play those instruments from a separate controller. Let's do that right now. So I'm gonna create a new track type, and we're going to create the external MIDI track type. And the option for use external instrument plugin, we're just gonna leave disabled, but we wanna make sure to set the MIDI destination to the appropriate destination and channel. So I'm going to select my MIDI interface here, and we're going to set it to the MIDI channel of one. And we're gonna click create. So now if we take a look at the mixer, we have this new external MIDI channel strip. And we can see in the track inspector here, that the MIDI out port is obviously set to my MIDI interface that's connected to the micro -corg, and the MIDI out channel is set to channel one, 
which is great because the microcorg is also set to MIDI channel one. That means that the microcorg will accept incoming MIDI data from Logic Pro on that channel. Now, I have an audio track lane here and a channel strip that we're going to record enable just so we can see that if I play the microcorg, there is audio being played. So let's do that right now. Awesome. Let's now set up the launch pad to work with the microcorg. Let's go back to MIDI import and let's set the option from all so any controller to that of the launch pad. And now if I play the launch pad, if we take a look, the MIDI in channel is just set to all. So any MIDI data sent across any MIDI channel from the launch pad will be communicated to the microcorg. So let's play the launch pad. Of course, you can specify a MIDI channel for your controller to communicate across and also for your external synth to accept from if maybe you have a controller that can communicate across multiple channels. So let's start playing with the MIDI channels. The microcorg again is set to channel one. If we take a look at the MIDI out here, we can see that Logic is set to MIDI channel one as well. If we set Logic's MIDI out channel to anything else, so let's say 16, if I try to perform with the launch pad, we're not gonna hear anything from the microcorg. Right, so we have to set the MIDI channel appropriately on the microcorg. I'm gonna set this to channel 16 as well. And we're not gonna do anything with the launch pad. If I try to play the launch pad now, again, the MIDI in channel is just set to all. So any incoming data from any channel, again, will be you know, transferred to the microcorg. But maybe I wanna specify a MIDI channel from the launch pad as well. So if we set the MIDI in channel to 16, and then if I go to the note settings here or the MIDI settings here on the launch pad, I can specify channel 16, but I'm not going to quite yet. Let's make sure this is set to the launch pad. And let's try to play the launch pad with the MIDI in channel set to 16. Nothing. So let's now set the MIDI channel on the launch pad to 16 and try and play again. Again, it's just so much easier now to connect specific MIDI controllers to specific software instruments or even external MIDI instruments thanks to these updates to the track inspector. This MIDI in port, I think, will save a lot of people a lot of heartache. And the further options of MIDI in channel, MIDI out port, etc., there's so much more routing capabilities when it comes to MIDI. So I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, YLogicProRules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.